Hey guys, so today we're going to be talking about one of the best Linux distributions that I found for people switching over from Windows. So let's go. So during my month of Linux series that I've been working on, I've been trying out different distributions and I came across one called Linux Lite. It's an Ubuntu based distribution using the XFCE desktop. And it's really nice for users coming over from Windows because it has a really uh, solid Windows feel to it. The way it's laid out, it's very similar to kind of a Windows 7 setup. So it should be very familiar for people coming over from Windows. But it's got a lot of nice applications. It has some of the standard stuff that comes with Ubuntu, but it has some custom things that are specific to Linux Lite that'll help new users get up and running. So I'm gonna run through that today. I'm using it on some older hardware to show you that it will run just as well on older hardware as it will on newer hardware. I'm doing it on an old um, Lenovo ThinkPad laptop. It's got a i5-3210M uh, processor. Uh, 12 gigs of RAM and just a 5200 RPM uh, drive. It's not solid state or anything, obviously. So let's get into the operating system and I'll give you a little tour of it. Okay guys, so here we are. When you first boot up Linux Lite, after you go through the installation and everything, it brings you to this menu where it has the uh, just the, some welcome things. And it gives you some hints on where to start. So this is really helpful for a new user that may not you know, have experience on what to do once Linux is installed. So you can go into here and it'll walk you through um, installing your updates. If you click on that, it'll ask you for your password. I'll type that in real quick. And then it goes through and it updates the repositories and looks for any updates and allow you to install them through this one click option for people that are not real familiar with uh, Synaptic or the Software Center or doing it through the uh, the terminal. So there I can see I have a bunch of updates. I can update those now. I'm not going to do that right now. Um, so I'm just going to cancel out of there. Um, same thing with the, the drivers. This will bring you into the area where you can do proprietary drivers. Um, I think I'm using one for, you know, Intel processors. And if you have like an NVIDIA card or something like that, or an AMD card, it'll show you those proprietary drivers for those, those cards. This is the only one I'm using, but you know, you can select it there and apply it. So it's just these one click entry points. This is really nice that this is something that's kind of unique to this distribution as far as being included out of the box and definitely if, as far as having easy access to it but these were restore points so this is very similar to a uh, a windows restore point where it kind of takes a snapshot of the current state of your system lets you set these restore points and then you can uh, restore any of them so i created one earlier today and then if I wanted to, I could just come in here and click this and do a system restore from that restore point. If I installed something and it, it hosed up my system, that's a quick way to get back to a, a previous snapshot of it. And it's real easy to create new restore points. You just click on this create new and it goes through. It takes, I think it took about 10 minutes, five to 10 minutes or so, but I just let it run and it was good to go. Um, if you have additional languages that you need to install support for, you can do that through here as well. And you can upgrade, when an uh, update comes out, you can upgrade to the next version of Linux Lite. I'm already at the, the current version. And you can also get into this Lite software. So this is one of the items that I mentioned earlier that are custom to Linux Lite. So if we come over into the menu here, and I'm just gonna type in Lite, there's different things that are specific to this distribution. There's light software, light tweaks, light update notification, light upgrades, light welcome, which is what we're looking at now. Um, light locker settings. Those are all things that are specifically built for this distro. So if we come into light software here, so I'm gonna update my software sources again. And this is a, isn't a completely comprehensive list of everything that's available, but it's a quick entry point for user, new users to be able to install software that would commonly be installed on a Linux system. So if we go to install software, we can click on that. And then it brings us into this list and you can see there's Audacity, Cherry Tree, Chromium. Down at the bottom, we have Wine and VirtualBox. 
Steam is in here. Uh, you know, one thing I, I noticed right off the bat was that GIMP wasn't in here. That's something I use all the time. But the reason why it's not in here is because GIMP is installed by default when you install the, the base system. So these are gonna list things that are not necessarily installed. It even has Kodi in here. So it's actually a really nice list. It, between what's installed in the system and what's available in this install software, that'll get you up and running and you'll be able to pretty much do anything with your system. And again, you can just click on it, click on install and it'll take you through that install process. And it just skips the whole step of having to find the software and the new users may, may not know what they're looking for. This tells you, you know, it gives you the software and then it gives you a description of what the software does. So Audacity is software for recording and editing sound. And so if somebody's looking for a sound recorder and they don't know anything about Audacity, maybe they were using the Windows sound recorder before, they can come into here and pretty easily find what they're looking for. So that's, that's pretty nice. So I'm going to go into some of these other Linux, uh, Linux Lite specific software and then I'll go into some of the other stuff as well. So that was Lite software that we just looked at. If we go into Lite tweaks, again, this is stuff that might commonly be used by, by somebody run at the command prompt usually. Um, but it, they have some common stuff in here and the nice thing is it even tells you if it's safe or that you need to use caution when running this. Like, you know, auto remove packages, it, it, that's a safe process. So it tells you clean your packages, it removes packages that are no longer installed and it's safe. So you can tell right from here what all these processes are. And this is a great um, learning point, even for people that have a little more experience that may not know about all of these because, you know, then you can go from this point and uh, look up some more information online if you don't know about any of this stuff. So that's just an, another one of those quick uh, jumping off points for, for Linux Lite. Let's go to the next item in the list here. Uh, Lite updates notify. So I'm gonna go into here. This is just gonna, you know, let us set the frequency that we get reminded for, for update notifications. This is kind of uh, Windows-esque as well. You know, you can tell it to remind you every day at 7 a.m. or every week or every hour or, you know, however often you want it. So that, that's really nice. You have, nice. You have some, some uh, customization around how frequently you get nagged about your, uh, your, your updates. Um, that was the upload, uh, light update notification. This is the light upgrade. So basically all that does is it goes out and it searches to see if there's any distribution upgrades for Linux Lite. If there is, it'll give you the option to install it. If not, obviously it, it tells you that you're using the latest release. And the light welcome, that's what we were initially greeted with here. And I think that's about it for the custom items. Light locker settings. So you can set your uh, your screen lock settings here. So you can en enable or de disable the light locker. Uh, you can have tell it when you want the, you know, to automatically lock your session and the delay for it. Um, so just some controls around that. The only thing it puts on the desktop is this help manual. So that's another nice thing. Not a lot of uh, distributions come with that. So it just takes you out to the web. And I mean, the way they have this laid out even is start here and then, you know, it kind of takes you through logically steps for, you know, setting things up on your system. So, you know, start here and then it goes into some information about the, about the distribution and the install guide and updates and installing software and the specific software, setting up your network, all this kind of stuff. It's, it's actually a really nice, again, launching point for new users and even experienced users. I'm just gonna go through some of the stuff that's pre-installed. Um, obviously this OBS down here, that's what I'm using to record my screencast. So that was not installed out of the box. I installed that one. But um, if we go through some of these, uh, it has this my computer setting uh, section in the menu and that just gets you out to your, you know, your um, library type 
areas that, you know, the, the equivalent of the Windows library, but different areas in Linux as well, your home, documents, downloads, music, pictures, public, templates, and videos. And for people that don't know, these are just folders that let you, you know, logically organize these different types of media. Settings, it has a whole bunch of uh, items in here. You can, I'm not gonna go through everything, go single setting, but basically this is common Ubuntu stuff. This is your proprietary drivers. You can get to your, your disk management if you need to repartition or format any disk that you um, attach. Uh, your appearance, if you wanna change your themes and your colors for your themes, you can do it through there. Accessories, you have, uh, this is where you can configure some backups, and these backups are different than the snapshots. These are a full system backup. The snapshot was kind of a current state where if you still have access to your system, but you kind of messed it up, you can restore it. This is, this is actually backing up your data, not um, your system configuration. Uh, again, calculator, screenshot, terminal, this is all standard stuff. Um, development <clears throat> just has the uh, icon, the GTK icon themes in there. Graphics, you have uh, GIMP editor, image viewer, and scanner software. The internet, um, Firefox comes default. Of course, you can add Chrome or Chromium if you want to. Multimedia, um, it came with the CD burner, VLC media player, and volume control. Again, I added OBS, that's what I'm doing my screen recording with. VLC is a really uh, nice media player. You know, they have it for all the different platforms, Windows, Mac, Linux, whatever. Office, it came with a subset of LibreOffice. So it came with the, the writer, the calc, and the um, whatever they, <laughs> I can't remember what they call the, the uh, PowerPoint equivalent for LibreOffice, but it comes with that. There's some, you know, it doesn't include the base and some of the other components of LibreOffice, but again, you can go and, and install the rest of that. And really for a new user, um, this is probably all they're going to need. Uh, it does come with a PDF viewer and, um, just a bunch of system tools. Here's that system backup. That's for the restore points. You can get into your task manager. A lot of this stuff is, is standard stuff for a Ubuntu installation. Um, on the taskbar, it looks very Windows-like. You know, you have the w menu, you have some favorited stuff you can add here. Um, you have your, you know, your list of running applications down at the bottom. This is uh, you've to switch between your virtual desktops. And then we have our uh, Bluetooth, our network connection, this is just a notification showing me that OBS is recording right now. Your sound and um, clock with a little calendar. So it has everything you need in here. It has, you know, Firefox for your web browsing and uh, it's got Thunderbird mail for email. It's got a PDF viewer. It's got your office suite. Uh, music player, picture viewer, and then coming into the, you know, our um, file browser here, we can, this brings us into our area and we can get into our documents, our downloads, all those different areas. We can view the full file system, get back to anything that's on our desktop, um, access any drives that are attached. So you can see on this Laptop, I have a, a DVD writer. Here's my my hard drive and my file system. We can connect out to our uh, network shares. So we can either do that in browse form here, or if we just do kind of, uh, I'm gonna go out to one of my servers here. And there we go. Um, I've gone out here before the first time you connect to a, a server, it's gonna ask you for your username and password. I've connected here before and told it to remember. That's why it didn't, didn't prompt me. But, you know, we have access here. And then while we're here, I'm gonna show you. If anybody's curious, that Technoformer is my old channel name. And for obvious reasons, I changed the name. <laughs> So if we do that and then uh, 
we can go and set our desktop background. So if we go into desktop settings, and again, a lot of this is very Windows-like. On Windows, you would access your, your desktop settings from the same area here. And these are some of the backgrounds that come with the distribution by default. But then you can go and add your, your own background. If you change the background, whoops, sorry. We change the folder that we're looking in. So I can go to other and then Steve, whoop, not videos, pictures, and just pick that one that I just grabbed, well, that folder that I put that picture in and then select it. It'll show you any of the pictures that you have in there. And then I can choose that as my, my desktop background. So that's really easy. So you can change the panel here. I'm gonna get rid of this calendar. And then you can go into here, you can go into panel and you can change your panel preferences. So you can set various item, you know, settings related to your panel and you can remove it if you want. You can add new items to the panel. So it comes with some default stuff and you can download more of these. So say I wanted a trash can applet in my, in my bar here, I could add that. And now, you know, if I want to empty my trash, I can come over here and see what's in it and empty it out and do whatever I want with it. So there you go, guys. That's Linux Lite in a nutshell. That wasn't a real in-depth uh, tour or anything, but just enough to get you an idea for, for what it's like. It should be really nice for people coming over from Windows. Uh, for people that have been using Linux for a long time, it's still really solid. It's, it's a great platform, but it might be a little bit too limited for people with some more experience. But for people just getting their feet wet in the Linux world, especially with you know the, the built-in help and those built-in applications, it's actually a really good distribution to take a look at. So hopefully you guys found this informative and helpful. Uh, please hit that subscribe button. I'm gonna be cranking out a few videos in the coming days. Um, comment on this and leave me video suggestions if you have any, or if you have any uh, information, something I left out, or suggestions uh, to add for Linux Lite itself, please leave those as well. And I will see you next time. Thanks so much for watching, guys.